Hi, this is your Sapna Bhartia and welcome to TFR Let's Talk. Today we have with us Anthony Griffin, Chief Architect at Hazelcast. Anthony, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you very much, Swapna. I'm delighted to be here. I'm more delighted than you are. We cover Hazelcast here on a regular basis, but I would love to just remind our viewers what is Hazelcast all about? And if you can just introduce yourself by yourself, I mean the company, from also the context of the announcement that we're going to talk about. So Hazelcast is a, is a distributed compute um, platform that has key three key pillars, right? Um, faster memory data store, distributed compute, and stream processing uh, for dealing with um, event-driven real-time data. That's essentially it in a nutshell swap them. You came to Hazelcast from AWS. You were part of the AWS Lambda uh, team. Uh, talk a bit about what attracted you towards Hazelcast. Why did you decide to move? I really enjoyed my time at Lambda um, at the cutting edge of uh, a serverless. And I got to work with some truly inspiring leaders like uh, AJ Nair and uh, Pori Craig and his team in Dublin. Um, but before that, I had always admired uh, Hazelcast, admired the brand and how Hazelcast brought simplicity to, um, to this distributed computing, to the complex world of distributed compute. Uh, Adrian Soares, the CTO of Hazelcast, um, reached out to me. And Adrian, I'd interviewed with Adrian in the past, and he mentioned that he was building a world-class team. He's hired people like Dr. Stephen Weston recently and uh, Colin Furlong as a VP of marketing. Uh, and he asked me would I be interested and the opportunity to shape a smaller company and take it on a transition and then to bring a lot of my expertise around real time building real time trading engines before I joined Lambda. And then my recent experience from Lambda as well in operating at scale and plus the mechanisms in Lambda, uh, bringing those to, uh, I guess, a scale up. Um, was an opportunity that, that I couldn't resist. Uh, Adrian has a super um, reputation in the city of London where I'd worked for a long, long time uh, in low latency trading. So uh, I also uh, took the opportunity to work with Adrian. Now let's talk about uh, the announcement that you folks are making today, the vector search capability. Hazelcast has always had, a, has been always very strong at storing um, highly structured data. All right, uh, got a long reputation of doing that, 10 years plus, right? Uh, today we announce right is um, processing of unstructured data, highly dimensional data, right, which is the introduction of vector storage and, and the distributed um, vector store, uh, in-memory vector store. What it does for Hazelcast does opens up a whole new um, set of new use cases, right? Semantic search, semantic caching, uh, which allows us to integrate in with um, integration in with large language models, and right, and then also uh, integrating with um embedding models as well, right? So we're storing vectors natively inside in Hazelcast. Now we're building on the quality attributes or the architectural characteristics that Hazelcast already has, right? So resiliency, consistency, availability, right? So it's kind of building on the pedigree that we already have for, for many years though, but it's something that we're really excited about and we're working quite closely with some of our customers on it. So really, 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 really happy with how it's turning out. Earlier, we touched upon AI, Gen AI. Uh, I want to talk about Gen AI again, but I want to talk about Gen AI. What does it mean for Hazelcast? Are you folks planning or using AI or Gen AI in an capacity or you're like, hey, this is not the right time or place for it for Hazelcast? Of course, we're looking at it, right? I think every company needs to look at uh, AI and generative AI. I mean, Hazelcast has already, you know, uh, have, have, has, I mean, has already been in the AI space, right? If you look at JET, our stream processing engine, you can already do inference with JET and we have customers using JET uh, for prediction, right? Uh, and, and for certain inference type models, right? Um, uh, I, I think in some senses, AI has a similar, there's a, there was a book by, um, a lady called Frances Carncross, which is called The Death of Distance. And it was all about when in the internet was being introduced, right? If you look at AI, it's kind of having a similar impact at the moment as the internet had around 15, 20 years ago, right? So uh, of course we're looking at it, right? Steve Weston, our chief scientist is an AI specialist. So even by the people that we were hired and some of the things that we were already done. And in some cases, right, is um, uh, our customers are also looking at varieties right, and we're kind of really nicely placed if you think about it right because we have AI breeds on data and data is necessary for AI and uh, if you go back to our core memory data store right we have pools of data albeit it started off as structured data and we process it very very quickly right uh, we always have done 
uh, two different, uh, um, um, I guess, computational modalities, right? Whether it was like a kind of a, as a distributed compute where you're working directly with the data on a node, right? Using a kind of MapReduce type pattern or whether you're working on the, uh, on the streaming data. So, uh, I, I mean, the exciting thing for us is now is like we introduce unstructured data and there are possibilities there. Data, obviously, and compute go hand in hand, right? And then it's like, you know, working very, very close to our customers on the ambitions that they have. But of course we are, we're the, we, we, of, of course. Now, when we talk about, you know, vector search, uh, what kind of challenges, pain points that you see customers have when they deal with it and how you folks are trying to ease. But I also want to look at the challenges. They're like, hey, these are still things that need to be addressed. And that's what Hazelcast will be focusing on going forward as well. The interesting thing with us, right, is, is right, is from a storage data storage point of us, right, is if you go back into the core architecture of Hazelcast, it's the distribution of data, right, itself, right? It's resilience, it's right, it's those quality attributes, the amount of data that you're, you can store. The proximity it is to compute, right, for latency. Um, so Hazelcast brings all those things, is right? We're laying vector store on, on, on top of that core foundation, right? So the pain points we're, we're solving with unstructured data are again being solved again by having an in-memory store for, you know, uh, for vector processing. And if you can talk about what are the things that, I mean, of course, you cannot share too much. We are just talking about the announcement that you just folks made. But what are the things that you folks are working on? What are the things that your customers, users, ecosystem partners, even competitors should be excited about from Hazelcast? I think the most exciting thing for us, of course, is what we're doing in and around um, AI uh, with the launch of uh, vector search, right, and how relevant that is for AI workloads. I think that's pretty exciting for our customers and also that we have uh, Steve Weston working at Steve's visiting prof prof professor with Imperial College in London um, it's kind of a it's kind of building what we already have right so if you think about it Hazelcast is exceptionally good at processing structured data now we're moving into the field of uh, unstructured data or highly dimensional data right so it builds on that core pedigree but it opens up a whole nother use cases, right? So integrating with large language models, integrating with embedding models, and um, it's quite exciting, right? We're working with some customers at the moment and they're looking at how they can integrate them in possibly chatbots, uh, looking at the potential of integrating RAG. Um, Hazelcast itself already takes care of kids or shields you from a lot of the problems of data distribution, right? It, it, it shields you from availability, resiliency. It's built into the core platform. And now we're layering vector search on top of that, right? With a high performance vector store. Anthony, thank you so much for joining me today and not only talk about your impressive career, but also Hazelcast and this new announcement that you folks are making today. Thanks for great insights. And I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you. Thank you, Swapton. It was a pleasure meeting you.